The second part of the lab is to make coal tar ointment using a different method. This is the ungulator. We will use the same materials. Here is the coal tar, salicylic acid, alcohol, and polysorbate already dissolved in a scintillation vial by the method that you did with the ointment slab method. And we need to weigh our ointment base, and we need to put it into an ungulator jar. Now, the jar has a cap that has a hole in it, and the jar also has a movable bottom to it. So make sure that you're using the right jar and not just a standard ointment jar. So to weigh the amount of ointment base into the jar, we will again use the electronic balance. So first, put the ungulator jar onto the balance, tear the balance, and then add the ointment directly into the jar. You notice I've taken the draft ring off, same reason as when you were doing the ointment slab method. We can go ahead and add enough ointment to get close to the amount of material we need, and then we can put the draft ring on to get the final reading. Again, just like when weighing the ointment in a weigh boat, take the jar off the balance and don't stab the ointment into the jar. Once you've added some, then go ahead and get an estimate of your weight. Make sure that the jar is not hitting the draft ring as you're taking your final reading. When you have the amount of material that you need, remove it from the balance and simply pour all of your solution into the jar. At this point, you want to push up on the bottom of the jar so that you don't have a lot of extra air in there. Let me recommend that you use two fingers to do this, one on each side of the jar. If you tend to just use one finger like this, you tend to have no control and you over push and spill things out. But use both fingers and just move it up you may need to level it off depending on how you did your weighing and try to get as much of the airspace out of it as you can. There are two blade types that can be used to mix the contents in a jar. There is the fixed blade type that you see this is permanently attached to the spindle, and then there is another kind where you have a disposable blade that can be attached to a spindle. The benefit to the disposable blade is that it will remain in the jar and you will not lose any ointment if you use it. The downside to it is that sometimes it will come off of the spindle and therefore you'll have to do it again. That is, you'll just have to use a different blade and try the mixing again. When you use the fixed blade spindle, what will happen is some of the ointment will stick to the blade, and when you remove this before you dispense the product, you will lose some of the product. If you decide to use the disposable blade, you want to make sure to put it on the spindle correctly. If you look at the blade, you'll notice that there's a small full circle off of the center circle on the blade, and there is a dot in the center of that circle. That dot wants to face up where the spindle is, so it would look like this. Now let me show you the other side. If you look at the other side, you don't see any dot. So we want the dot facing up Put the spindle in and turn it counterclockwise. It will turn about an eighth of a turn. Make sure that the spindle is firmly seated into the blade. But whichever one you take, remove the cap 
from the lid and push the spindle through and take it all the way through till the blade sits in the top of the cap. And then screw that onto your unguator jar. Then from here, add it to the bottom of the platform and screw the jar into the platform. What we need to do now is to go ahead and engage the spindle into the ungulator. You notice this one does not have a chuck on it, so it should automatically align as the spindle goes up. The spindle should rotate a little bit into the correct orientation and then should engage into the ungulator. My experience has shown me that it's easier to take a second spindle and make sure you know where the alignment is and then you avoid the problem of it not engaging correctly. So I'm just setting the spindle up here and I'm just watching where the notches on the spindle let me push the spindle all the way in. And they're actually facing me while I'm standing here so I'm going to turn this just a little bit so that the notches on the spindle are in the same orientation. All right, we want to engage the spindle into the head. We know how to orient the notches. Make sure the spindle is pulled all the way up to the top of the jar. And you'll notice the other thing I'm going to do is help guide the spindle into the opening. It seems to engage better if it doesn't have an opportunity to wobble. So I'm going to start it up and kind of take hold here and you'll notice that it engages fairly easily. At this point we need to go ahead and set our time and our speed. The time is done with the center black button. We push that and we want to decrease our time to one minute and 30 seconds. So we go down to 1.30, that's one minute, 30 seconds. We want to increase our speed, and the speed is the circular button. We want to use a speed of six, so we'll do that, and you notice that the six is located in the display. That's about 1,600 RPMs. And then at this point, we're ready to go ahead and start the operation of the machine. This is the power button, the start button, and so I'll push that, and it's ready to begin. So when it's done, we need to disengage the jar. Since we use the disposable blade, the blade will stay in the jar and the spindle will come out. Turn the spindle one way as you're pulling out and turn the jar the other way. The correct way is to turn the spindle toward you and move the jar away from you. And as you're doing it, pull them apart and they'll come apart and you'll notice that the blade is still in the ointment but the ointment can pass through the blade since the way it's designed there's a lot of holes and gaps in it so now that we're done when you dispense this to the patient put a label on the jar and you can instruct the patient that what they need to do to get the ointment out is just push on the bottom of the container. Again, you might suggest that they use two hands instead of one, and you'll notice that the ointment is coming out. Now, if you dispense it like this, you can just put a standard cap on it, and then that way that provides protection for the product. Another alternative, though, is to use a different kind of dispensing cap that will put out a small stream of ointment. That way you can measure the amount of ointment that has been dispensed by a fraction part of an inch or an inch of ointment or however you'd like to describe it to your patient. In this way they don't get a large amount of ointment at one time, they actually get a small amount of ointment coming out. And you can see that the stream is pretty well defined. If for some reason you think that you need a larger stream than this, you can simply cut off part of the tip and custom make the size. 
Then there is a plastic cap that goes on the tip that will also provide protection for the product. We have a different model of the ungulator in the lab, and I wanted to show you a couple of features of it. You'll notice the first thing that it has is it has a collar on the chuck where you can actually see, and then you'll notice it has a release button up on top. Now, when you get ready to engage the jar, what you want to do is line the notches of the spindle up with a black mark that is on the collar of the chuck. Like with the other model, you should guide the spindle as it goes to the engage. And then that engagement is done. Now, the only other difference with this is after you have mixed the contents in the jar and you're ready to release the jar and disengage it, you want to unscrew the jar, but then you may have to push this release button up on top for the spindle to disengage from the chuck and you can remove the jar.